Thank you, Jerry, for joining us. Um, Jerry uh, is, Tapa is somebody that I met um, one time when I was uh, at a, an art party, which is a, a, an effort of loud. And, um, and I had just been bemoaning the fact that there, it was so hard to find graphic artists when one needed one. And Jerry said, you know, I do that. Um, Jerry has been, uh, for the past couple of years, Jerry's been here in Madison working with um, Art and Sons in graphic design. Um, he has uh, been recognized um, by a number of different um, organizations, but most particularly with the Design um, Institute of, I'm sorry, is that Brantley? No. With the Design um, Institute of Loro, and I think is my, I'm going to check my microphone just to, I'm, okay. I hope that that is good. Okay. Um, Jerry's been published in, in uh, Logo Lounge um, Master Library, which is really worth looking up online. If you haven't, it's not my area and I had not been aware of it. And he is um, also been in the, he's been celebrated here in Madison at the Momoka Biennial um, Design Program. Uh, uh, it's it's a, an exhibit that happens in um, every, every two years, Biennial clearly being either once every two years or twice in a year. Um, he's been, he was exhibited in 2012, 2014, and 20, 2016. Um, it's for the last 22 years, he's worked on local and national brands. Um, and that includes both for large, very large for-profit um, groups, as well as nonprofit. Um, he's uh, worked with the first indigenous um, brewing company owned by a woman, uh, Bow and Arrow Brewing. And he's worked with um, the World Council on Credit Unions, which we have here in Madison. He's passionate about time with family, outdoors, restoring his classic car and the environment. Thank you on that. And may you have good success in fixing the environment. That would be really good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, again, I will hold up um, an obnoxious sign that says five minutes as, as we get to the end so that you know, and then we'll switch to question and answers. Great. Thank you, Jan. Uh, really appreciate the introduction. Uh, thank you, everybody who is here in attendance um, for, um, for this. I know I've got 18 minutes to kind of share a little bit about um, uh, my experience as a graphic designer. Uh, I'm going to quickly jump into it. Uh, I've got some slides prepared here to share. Um, so yes, um, Art and Sons, I am part of a boy band. <laughs> um, so these are my business partners, um, Drew Garza uh, and uh, Scott Pauli. Uh, we are a trio in Madison, Wisconsin, um, a collaboration trio that's been worked on a lot of different um, local and national brands um, that you've shared a few about. Um, uh, for instance, the uh, Robert F. Kennedy Human Rights 50th Anniversary Identity um, was one project that we worked on also help them with their website. Um, the uh, Nathaniel Mary Quinn book uh, for the um, Museum of Contemporary Art. This one won the um, 2019 AIGA best cover and best book design. Here's a few spreads of that book. Uh, got hired by the Overture Center for the Arts to help develop the catalog, the look and feel. Here's a couple of spreads. Um, helped with some startups, uh, like Porridge Kombucha, designing all of their can designs, um, a lot of their promotional materials. And then lastly, um, uh, another area that we are expanding is in is full um, branding and interior design for restaurants. So we designed um, with collaboration with uh, the Food Fight uh, group in Madison. They hired us to do the branding, uh, the, all the interior design, menu design, 
uh, exterior signage, um, you know, basically all things part of this restaurant, we were in charge of, of uh, giving the visual direction um, and helping them to develop this project. Uh, I had a couple of questions that were asked to me for this presentation. And one of them was the idea of what sparked your interest in your career as a graphic designer. So when I think about that, I kind of have to go back to where I'm from. Um, I grew up in a small town called Orange Cove, California. At the time, it was a population of about 5,000 people, a uh, heavy agriculture um, uh, area. Uh, my parents uh, both uh, immigrated here in their younger ages, uh, nine, and um, I think my dad was about nine. My mom was maybe a teenager. Uh, they're from Tamaulipas and Nuevo León, which is northern Mexico. Um, the, the thing that when I think about this early on, the idea of a career in graphic design never was a part of my mind or my thinking. Um, uh, it was just always this idea of getting a job as a doctor, lawyer, teacher, these kind of stable careers um, that in that mindset is where I was at. Um, but later, um, looking back, I think about what things sparked it. It was always this interest in the arts. Um, from the earliest memory I have is when my mom was picking uh, grapes, uh, mom and dad are picking grapes, there'd have to be somebody who would have to put these papers down on the ground so you can put the actual grapes on there. And so that was my job. So I would go ahead of time and put all of the, um, the, the pieces of paper down the whole row. And I would sit at the end of the other aisle um, just working on sculpting faces out of dirt. And that's kind of how I, my first memory of the arts and doing something with the arts um, and then that progressed to later when I was in junior high, um, I got asked once to grab a business card from a local um, uh, grocery store and to blow it up in the back of a baseball diamond for the Little League team. And so this top left corner was something where I had never, never learned anything about what typography was or layout. I just kind of did it and I, I got paid 50 bucks for it. So I was pretty excited. Um, later I found out a guy who, um, in that kind of junior high age was, um, uh, he designed t-shirts for ocean Pacific. And I just thought that was amazing. And that's kind of my first introduction to the idea that somebody can get paid to do art. Um, but then continuing through high school, I got asked to do a lot of, uh, artistic things from the point of like designing t-shirts for a lot of the volleyball teams or football teams that I was involved in. I would design the shirts, but then this mysterious, like it would go somewhere and then I'll, and then I would get the full t-shirt printed. I had no idea who touched it, who did it. They just took my sketch and developed it um, to this really pirates. This is the stage of where the cheerleaders would stand in front of a football team where they would actually be able to perform. So I got, um, I kind of asked if I could go in there and just do this big painting on this thing and say, they said, yeah. So I got a, um, a lot of, experiences uh, early on to kind of participate and to use the arts, um, you know, for my community, uh, for things that I was uh, doing. Um, but even to the point of looking back at my family, um, you know, again, both my parents early on were farm laborers. Um, my mom ended up working at a packing shed later. My dad worked for um, a glass company and became a custodian. Um, and then both my brothers also, you know, pursued school and um, were, were pursuing different careers. But it wasn't until later when I was in college, when I decided to kind of, that's when my change of going into this idea of graphic design, I started looking back at my parents. My dad would record, he was a videographer. So he did a lot of quinceañeras. Um, and then my mom was a seamstress. Um, she uh, sewed a lot of dresses, like all of my clothes growing up till junior high. Um, I had, to, I went and picked fabrics and my mom made my shorts and different things. My oldest brother, um, started in kind of in the music industry, uh, also was a painter. My other brother, Pablo, um, uh, got into pottery and a lot of the areas, but these were all things that they did secondary to what their careers were. And so it was never a push to, um, think about a career in the arts as a main um, driver. Um, but it wasn't until later that I started to realize that everybody had a, a, an area where they express themselves in the arts. 
Um, so one of the question was, uh, what advice would you give your 15 year old self? Um, I go back to high school in that time. I think about um, any opportunities that I could think of, of uh, designing murals, um, paintings, uh, t-shirt designs, uh, any any opportunities that I that I got, I would take um, to the point where uh, I had people telling me that I also needed to kind of say no to some of these projects. But it was it was great experience for me to begin to see this idea of what I could do with the arts. Um, and at the same time, I also had experience that were not that great, where um, um, a high school friend of mine, ours, we did this huge mural at the school. And um, it had some religious tones to it. And um, we spent the whole weekend painting this awesome mural. And then when we showed up um, on uh, Monday morning, our art teacher uh, had the uh, white paint and it was just like covering the whole thing. So nobody ever saw it. It just got put, it got put away. And so that was kind of a bummer um, uh, for our experience of being artists and doing things. But again, that was a public public area for you know, school and at that time wasn't acceptable. Um, but the advice again, um, I'd like to share is the idea that you know, any, any opportunities that you can um, take those. Um, sometimes you kind of have to just feel them out as you go. Um, or if there's things that uh, interest you, um, try kind of knocking on doors of people to let you do things. Because a lot of the early things I did were for family and friends um, and people that I knew. Um, and then late, later, um, I was asked as part of this presentation that we should kind of move it to more of a professional, like uh, careers um, and uh, the different audiences. So somebody who in the 25 years, or what I tell my 25 year old self. The one thing I would say is that um, give back. Um, uh, how I met my two business partners was through a program called Mess Hall Press, where here, here based in Madison over, this was over 18 years ago, where the three of us all worked for different design agencies. And we were, um, we kind of all just by chance, were all volunteering for this program. Uh, Scott Paul, I actually founded the, the organization. Um, but what we did is we would go to high schools um, and teach them basic graphic design skills and then and then, and screen printing, uh, the idea for them to get their art um, on a shirt, on a poster uh, was our goal. Um, and the other thing too um, that I did a lot was um, study. I, I did more studying after college um, than I did during. Um, and so that was definitely an area where, um, you know, I, quick story with college is I actually have not gotten my college degree. Um, I went through school um, at, uh, went through the, a graphic design program, didn't get accepted. I decided to stay another year to try to pursue it, did not get in again. Um, but then I was told that I graduated. So I had my family, everybody there. Uh, I, I walked and uh, had my family up in the stadiums cheering me on. And then um, I was getting ready to move away. And I got a letter in the mail saying that I was a couple of credits short. Um, uh, so nobody ever, like, it was kind of one of these things where uh, it's kind of been uh, um, a thing that needs to get done someday. But with that, even during that time, um, I have read more, learned more. Um, in the arts um, and in design that uh, I ever did during college, uh, just kind of pursuing that. Um, and then what lessons have I learned in this process? Um, I would say one of the main things is um, collaboration and partnership in the graphic design field is, is uh, an area that I, you could do this on your own, but as soon as you join a team of people, of creatives that you trust, um, the work just ex it gets, expands the, the quality. Um, and that's kind of what I got with working with Art and Sons. Marry a good wife um, uh, that pushes you, tells you when you need to do. Um, um, you know, family is always important. 
Um, and then another lesson to me is I played uh, sports, collegiate volleyball. Um, it's always been something that this idea of balance uh, of life um, and uh, is really important even to our company that um, we make sure that, you know, we're making sure we're having a lot of time with family, that we're actually getting uh, times to kind of get out and do things um, that kind of, that are outside of the career uh, of graphic design. Uh, and part of it is just because there's so much um, mental um, work that gets done in the creative industry, especially in doing like corporate work. Um, so your mind is constantly going, going, trying to solve visual problems. And so it's always great for us to make sure that we, you know, cut, cut it off when we need to. So thank you. Um, I think I'm now I'm going to bring it over to some question and answers. Um, I think you guys are curating that. Thank you. Um, our first question uh, is it, what you're doing next. What's your next project or where, where is your next are you in this career for a while um, uh, or are you going to change up to something or what's your next project? Um, I am still staying in this career. Uh, I'm not going anywhere, um, but I would say that the next, the project that we are heavily into right now is we're working on a, um, a new restaurant on, on State Street called Botanist. Um, we are kind of like Bar Coralini. We are in charge of all the branding, all of the menu, all of the design, all the interior design. Um, and so it's one that we're pursuing heavily, um, you know, doing our, our work. If you happen to be down on State Street, uh, it's where the Icon Bar used to be. Um, you know, it can peek your head in there, but it's still maybe like a month and a half away from being completed. So, yeah. So would you do it all again, the way you have done it? Yes. Uh, well, no. Again, the advice, I, I look back at uh, things that I wish I kind of pursued earlier, things I would, I would say uh, take a couple of business classes. Um, uh, when I was younger, I think um, I, I had to learn a lot of that, um, going and owning a company. Um, I think it's different if you're just going into graphic design uh, just to, to get a career. Uh, but if you really want to own a business, um, that portion definitely was something that I had to learn as I, as I went. And um, uh, if I would have taken, I think some classes, um, you know, that would have been really helpful and kind of speed, you know, sped up things for me. Not to put you on the spot, but can you talk a little bit about some, a mistake you made somewhere along the line, what you learned from it, um, whether you feel like it set you back or what happened with it? Yeah, um, when I think about mistakes, um, to me, in the, in the, especially in like owning a business, um, I, I, go, I go into contracts. <laughs> um, it's um, early, early on, maybe after like, five years into business, um, I, ha I hired a lawyer uh, to write up a really good agreement for me uh, to protect myself as, a, as an artist, as a designer, as a business owner. And during that time, there were things that happened where, you know, um, you, know you, you didn't get scope right or something happened and then people would come after you and you'd have to kind of defend yourself. So a lot of times that would come into play where, yeah, kind of had to, um, yeah, protect yourself um, as a business owner. Um, but on the creative side, when it comes to mistakes, you know, I think there is, um, I think that's where I think to me that the collaboration comes in, where um, you, you have freedoms early on in the process to really explore a lot of creative concepts and ideas with a team. And then those, all those ideas are really in a very healthy uh, area where then you can begin to um, curate the ones that aren't as great um, to kind of just show those to clients. If you were to be approached by, uh, you know, you're often work with youth and or run across to youth who say, this is my dream, this is what I wanna do. Um, and especially in a town, I think like Madison, which is both big and small, mm -hmm. uh, they often don't know where, to even begin to look for guidance, 
for work. Maybe they are already to a point where they feel that they have the skills, but they don't know how to connect and make a living. Um, can you share some thoughts about that? Yeah, um, we've done um, over the years, um, I think in the last seven years, we've done a lot of programs with um, MATC and University of Madison to bring on interns. Um, and a lot of these questions come up where um, students are wanting watching to, this wanting to, um, to get to a point where they can um, um, get a career. And, and a lot of it for us is trying to hone them in of where they want to go. And the one thing that I like to tell them is to explore as many options as possible when it comes to um, if they're interested in, you know, um, print design, web design, packaging. There's so many different avenues to go in in graphic design that you don't have to just do one area. So we try to open up those views of the career of the different options you have and try to guide them in that um, so that they can kind of make more, you know, decisions early on um, to kind of help them in their in their pursuits of a career in graphic design. When I look at, look, you know, I looked at some of um, your work um, and I will say for those people who are here in Madison, you will instantly recognize a number of, of the projects that, that Jerry's worked on. Um, I think particularly, I think of uh, uh, the kombucha pops into mind. I, um, that is absolutely uh, a, it was a very clear, if you see that across across a, a shelf, you know, when you're in the, in the store or something like that, you instantly know that brand, you know, um, know it. And yet when I look at the book that you showed that received the, um, the prize, there's totally different concepts. And I'm wondering, is it easy to switch back and forth? Um, do you have... Do you feel like it's a different mindset, different points in your career? Um, when it comes to design, um, you know, we, especially when you're doing commercial work, there's always the, um, the client, you know, that you need to, to, to please because um, they're hiring you. But there's right. still an aspect of um, our job that is the creative. And that's why they're, they're hiring us specifically because we have a specific style an approach to our creative process. And those results are very. And so when we approach a project with a client, um, it's kind of a, a, a collaboration with them as well, that they, we show them multiple versions, like those can designs. There was multiple versions of that, that the, the client also had to embrace one of those ideas. And sometimes it's a challenge to get clients to kind of go for it in a sense that going to something that is so out there, so unique, but we've been fortunate that we have a lot of clients that trust us um, and that do go there um, because they realize that when, when um, they push the limits, it also helps them stand out, especially specifically in like packaging design um, things like, books for the museum, you know, now we've done like three or four of them and yeah, they're all very different, but again, the client there is the artist. And so we um, spend time interviewing the artist and asking them more questions. And, and then from that, we pull a lot of different creative. And again, it's a very similar relationship like with the client um, that we need to kind of foster and say, here are the different directions and concepts that we want to show them. Um, but we try not to show anything that we don't like um, or that we don't approve. Um, and that's where I think by having a team that begins to curate that early on. And uh -huh. then when we show the client, then if the three of us are usually excited about it, you know, then it has a pretty good uh, weight going into a client um, approving like a direction. That sounds like a pretty universal um, lesson to learn, one that I am just now figuring out that don't present something if you don't want to end up doing it. Yeah. Um, I think we're just about out of time. Is there anything that um, I can have you add? Any? Um, I understand that you have been here for a little while in Madison. But what brought yeah. you here originally? Yeah, originally it was my wife, um, Bree Chapa. Um, she um, is from the Fox Valley area. Um, I moved here in 2001 um, and uh, pursuing love. 
um, and kind of from that, I uh, planted myself in the Madison area. I live in Monona currently. Um, and um, yeah, that's kind of what, you know, I'm now kind of putting roots here with, uh, you know, my home um, and having kids. And um, yeah, so it's, uh, you know, been married for 18 years. Um, and uh, again, my boys are 13 and 11. Um, but yeah, Madison is great. Um, love the community here. Uh, love the support um, uh, as our company has been growing. Um, and like the introduction is we also are, uh, uh, you know, we do a lot of work nationally and that's an area that we're trying to expand more and more um, with, you know, clients in, um, in um, um, New Mexico, Maine, um, New York, Chicago, um, Portland, um, so we, we're starting to kind of branch out even further. Um, and so that's an area that we're definitely trying to pursue more and more. I'm curious about whether you, you, uh, your kids come into the studio and sort of see what you're doing and um, have thoughts about it or if they have any interest in that. Um, as someone who hauled their kids into meetings, um, I find that now that they're quite old, um, <laughs> That, that every now and then something comes out that they learned, you know, 25 years ago. And it mm-hmm. surprises me always. I'm wondering if you bring your kids into the studio or if they have access to that. Oh, definitely. Um, they definitely get access to um, some of the process. Um, they, they do come in, they have come into the studio. I've actually even had them, um, we did a campaign for uh, the mayor over COVID and we needed just some really rough, like, kid typography and so we just said here like write the abcs like three times you know each of them and we had all and my my business partner scott um has a daughter the same age as my younger um and so everybody kind of just pitched in and we we scanned all of these images you know and used that type for the posters that were presented all over the city and so um yes it's it's uh you know, there's a lot of um, exposure to the arts. And my wife is a math major. So we're kind of like the opposite. So I have no idea what they're going to become when they get older, but right. they're going to have like these two different, um, um, you know, perspectives. Um, but again, they, you know, they have, like I said, married the right woman uh, who's always kind of asked me for, you know, the numbers making sure the business is running well and you know all, all those kinds of aspects that if I would have probably started the company years ago on my own would probably failed it um, uh, but um, but definitely is, was um, an area that um, I think my kids have seen um, and hopefully are learning from that so thank you so much for sharing um, and for bringing I think one of the more successful ways to make a living as an artist into into this conversation. I think it's um, it's very, very helpful, very interesting to hear. Um, for those of you that are in this room, um, we are going to have a transition um, and Denora Marquez Avariano is gonna be in this room. And I believe it is Armando Ibarra will be in the other room, which is the main room. So if you want to make a switch, now is the time to do it. And we will restart in a minute. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for coming.